Black Lives Matter is not happy over the DNC's push for Vice President Kamala Harris to replace Joe Biden as the DNC nominee. Yesterday, the organization posted a statement to its website alleging the DNC threatens democracy by boxing out voters from its nomination process. It went on to accuse the DNC of trying to manipulate black voters by anointing Kamala Harris without a primary vote. Now, it demands an informal virtual snap primary to fix the problem. Nick Freitas is a member of the Virginia House of Delegates and host of Making the Argument podcast. He joins us now. So, Nick, I might not ever say this again, but does Black Lives Matter have a point? Should we actually be having the DNC holding an immediate primary? Well, I mean, gosh, BLM is upset that the party of democracy is trying to select their candidate in a smoke filled room where none of them come participate. I'm shocked. Um, but no, I, they have a point. There's something should be done. I mean, they could have stuck with their candidate, but I guess, uh, you know, that just that that wasn't an option. And, and keep in mind, the Democrats are not getting rid of Joe Biden because of cognitive decline. They're getting rid of him because of polling decline. If he was still five points ahead in the polls, they wouldn't care that he wouldn't be able to string a sentence together. Nick, what did you make of that Sunday switch out on X by Joe Biden saying he's not going to seek reelection? Well, I think the first question I had and many Americans had was, does Joe Biden know that he's dropping out? Like, because honestly, what we didn't see him for six days. And then all of a sudden we get a, a letter that didn't even really look like his, his authentic signature. And uh, now I guess we're finally going to find out that, yeah, he, he really does mean it. He's he's dropping out. And I guess the only question that we have now is, you know, how many pardons were promised to him in order to get him to do this? Yeah. I mean, what do you think he needs to tell the American people? I mean, is is there anything at this point that either side really needs to hear to change their mind one way or the other? Like, I, I look, if he's going to stay in office at this point, the guy still got the nuclear codes. Now, he made some pretty horrible decisions. And I don't just mean economically. I mean, like what he did in Afghanistan was absolutely horrendous. What has happened at the border? Absolutely horrendous. And he did that when he still had some vestige of cognitive ability. So if he's going to stay in position, then, yeah, I would like to know that he's actually capable of. I don't know, a coherent thought. That would be great. So, Nick, we've heard that Kamala Harris is raking in the campaign money already. But when we went back and looked at her run to try and become president, she had to drop out before she even made it to Iowa. So are the progressives going to turn out for Kamala Harris? Or is this something where, you know, everybody just kind of looks at it right now and they feel that excitement. But when it comes to November 5th, they won't be there. So you, you said it best. The same Democrats that completely rejected Kamala Harris when she ran for president are not overwhelmingly excited about her right now. Here's what's going to happen. Here's the entire campaign strategy. Ready? I'm just going to give it to you. They're going to try to get people excited about Kamala Harris for about five minutes. When that fails, they're going to go back to their typical strategy, which is just calling everybody that disagrees with them a racist, a sexist, a, a threat to democracy. And that's the campaign strategy until November. There it is. Free of charge. Well, and we know that Joe Biden had named Kamala Harris the border czar. And I think we actually have a clip of that because Democrats are trying to forget it. But let's take a look at it real quick. And so this increase has been consequential. And but the vice president's agreed among the multiple other things that have in the meeting. And I appreciate it. Uh, agreed to um, uh, lead our diplomatic effort and work with those nations to accept re the returnees and enhance migration enforcement at their borders. Oh, I'm asked Joe Biden. But we do have Kamala Harris as the borders are. She was placed in charge of the southern border. And that means something because Democrats are trying to run away from it right now, Nick. And if you just watch mainstream media sources, are, are they going to be able to get away with this, with her not having, quote unquote, anything to do with the southern border? Well, I mean, if people cared about mainstream media sources, we'd be in a lot of trouble right now, but they increasingly do not. And for very good reason, it's because they've proven time and again, they're not reliable. The bottom line is the reason why Kamala Harris could not get out of the Democratic primary the first time she ran is because she didn't have a record in, in, as attorney general of California that she could run on. She didn't have a record as a senator that she could run on. She didn't have... A, very impressive speaking ability or debating ability. And so she lost when she became vice president. This was the one thing that she was given that would have been significant, that would have shown that she has the ability to deal with a complex issue. And in some ways, at the very least, mitigate it. And she failed 
dismally. So they're going to have to act like this is not a big deal. And look, to, to rich Democrat donors, they probably won't care as much because they've got enough money to spare themselves the consequences of their policies. But to working class Democrats who kids can't go to school because it's been you know emptied out in order to be temporary housing for migrants, overwhelmingly of like young men between the ages of 25 or 20 and 26, yet those voters are probably pissed. And I don't think they're going to be able to run away from it simply because the mainstream media tells them to. But if you if you are the Democratic Party and you're out there as a voter, uh, again, you you, ne- you mentioned a little bit, but do they really care about border security? Because it hasn't been something right. We've seen the inflows for the last few years under Joe Biden. It's not like they were going and shouting from the rooftops to stop this. Oh, I don't know. If you looked at some of the town halls in, in some of these smaller communities, especially in the suburbs of, of big city areas and even in some of the big cities, you started to see a major difference with the way that they looked at this issue. And this is something where it also gets back to the wealthy Democrats had enough money to avoid the consequences of their policies. Poorer Democrats did not. And so when all of a sudden the border, you know, compliments of Governor DeSantis and Governor Abbott went from the border all the way to a neighborhood near you in a sanctuary city, All of a sudden, it wasn't so funny anymore. All of a sudden, it was a real problem. All of a sudden, when it's their kids getting accosted on the way to school or not being able to go to school, all of a sudden when, you know, again, migrants between males between the ages of 20 and 26 are getting free food and free debit cards at the same time that working class Democrats are trying to make ends meet, I think a lot of them, not all of them, but I think a lot of them notice that and realize that their party is not doing anything to solve this problem because they've worked themselves into this ideological trap that if they do try to solve of it. Oh, guess what? They're racist. They're xenophobes. So no, I, again, is it going to affect all Democrats? No, but a lot of people that may be a little bit more in the middle, maybe that really had to deal with the consequences of these policies. I think they're going to come around. 